Hi there. Thanks for joining us for Together, I'm Karen Lee. This show is about the good taking place around us every day, all the time. We're going to highlight stories of volunteers, veterans, and even children who are coming together for Colorado and for each other. We love this show, and we love sharing these stories with you. So we hope that you feel as inspired as we do after watching them. Sit back, relax with the entire family, and enjoy. For more than a decade, a horse riding center in Lafayette has been coming together for Coloradans with special needs. Miracles Therapeutic Riding Center gets those kids on horses for the first time. The organization has helped hundreds of children throughout the years. But as Kelly Worthman explains, this time they are the ones in need of a little help. For Chris Griffith, horses are a passion. She wants to share them with everyone. Okay. And she does at the Miracles Therapeutic Riding Center. The most important thing that we do is we get the riders moving. But her mission cannot continue without some help. We've always struggled to have enough volunteers. What you can do to keep this nonprofit going, plus the impact it's having on kids' lives, that's next on Together. Corn mazes are popular in Colorado this time of year, and there's one in Wellington that is unlike any other. But it's not because of the corn, it's because of the employees. Dylan Thomas takes us to Harvest Farm. Oh, yeah! On any given day, you'll find plenty of smiles and fun at the Harvest Farm. It's a change for employees like Taylor Reed. That's because before coming to the farm, his life was very different. I was. Uh, addicted to meth and heroin. How this farm is helping former addicts navigate their way to sobriety. I want this more than breath. That's later on Together. Well, Colorado wouldn't be the same without all of its trails. That's why a Girl Scout is coming together to preserve one of Boulder County's open spaces. But that spot is more than a trail. As Dominic Garcia explains, it's a piece of history. Renee Gangwish loves the outdoors. And it's always been a really special part of my childhood. She also loves giving back. So I wanted to do something that helped the community. And that's why she's here at Walker Ranch in Boulder County. And I thought it was really, really special to help something like this. And she's not the only one who thinks it's special. What Renee is doing to breathe new life into this historic spot, that's coming up on Together. Well, protecting the beauty of our state is a top priority for many of us. That's why there's a new business that's dedicated to sending less waste to the landfill. According to the city of Denver, more than 50% of what residents actually throw in the trash can can be composted. But thanks to a pedal-powered approach, that number is slowly changing. Kathy Walsh and photojournalist Bob Burke introduce us to the woman who is coming together to make composting cool. It's such a beautiful day for this. 36-year-old Christy Turner pedals five days a week up to 40 miles a day. She picks up bags of what most people throw out. Christy is on a mission to turn waste into something wonderful. So are you sort of Denver's queen of compost? <laughs> um, I prefer trash lady. <laughs> her company is called Scraps. That's what Christy hauls away on her trusty tricycle food scraps, and anything compostable. We're all about expanding opportunities to compost in Denver. Scraps picks up where the city compost program leaves off, covering larger residential buildings and businesses on bikes and trikes. Doesn't matter if it's a narrow alley or there's overhead wires or it's difficult to access, we can figure out how to service you. At Zeppelin Station, vendors sort food waste Customers dump leftovers, even compostable utensils, into special bins. The food hall is one of Scrap's 400 paying customers. We've picked up more than 150,000 pounds of compostables in just over a year and a half. Schooled in sustainability, waste gets Christy worked up. She's committed to turning trash into nutrient-rich soil. Sorting through every sack before dropping it into Alpine Company dumpsters is a dirty job but she's happy to do it. And she does a great job at it. Well, a horse riding center in Lafayette is doing more than introducing kids to the animals. It's also changing lives. The Miracles Therapeutic Riding Center gives people with special needs the thrill of the ride, but the thrills can't continue without the help of volunteers. Kelly Worthman and photojournalist Mark Nitro take us to Lafayette. <laughs> 
Every week, Jake Scott takes time to help others. We're letting her do sit-ups on the horse. He's a volunteer at Miracles Therapeutic Riding Center in Lafayette. And this isn't just about you know, therapy and all that, this is about confidence building. And he's a perfect example of how well the special program works. I'm autistic. I was diagnosed when I was three. Okay. <laughs> to overcome some of his challenges, Jake began riding therapy horses here with the help of volunteers. Twelve years later, Jake says he's truly transformed. I wasn't really verbal until second grade, but I mean, look at me, I'm doing a news interview. It's all thanks to the program Chris Griffith started 15 years ago to help people of all ages with special needs. The most important thing that we do is we get the riders moving. <laughs> the movement of the horse builds their core strength in a way that nothing else can. With dozens of special riders signed up for classes, Chris says at least 50 volunteers are needed every week, and that doesn't come easy. We've always struggled to have enough volunteers. It's this time of year when many of the volunteers go back to school, so they can't commit as much time to helping these special students. As the therapy riding program continues to grow, more helping hands are needed. One more, one more. Chris says anyone can sign up to help. All that's required is compassion. Other than that, we can teach them what they have to do with the horse. We can teach them what they have to do with the rider. If you don't get enough volunteers, can the program continue? No, no. And Jake definitely doesn't want that to happen, so he's hopeful people will join him in helping others. I'm not going to force anyone to volunteer if they truly don't want to, but <laughs> the, the gist of it is, is it's something you look forward to. Well, this story touched us so much. We wanted Kelly Worthman to come in and talk a little bit more about it, to educate us a little bit more about what's going on there. Yeah. You can just see the miracles happening there. It's really remarkable. I mean, Jake is kind of one of the miracles yeah. in itself, mm -hmm. but a couple of those riders that you saw in the story there, they can't walk on their own, right? They don't have that muscular ability, but something happens when they get on that horse. I mean, their smiles just become so big, but they have control, and you can just tell how much joy they're getting out of life. And you know, their parents or their guardians are watching, yeah. and it's it's really miraculous to see their change. Yeah, physically, right? And that, right. They go through all kinds of things. Absolutely. Let's talk about the uh, the volunteers, too. I, they need volunteers out there, for sure. Yes. Um, but these volunteers are really special as well. They are some of the more patient people, I think, mm -hmm. that I've ever met. And, you know, again, the story of Jake, just to know his story of how Miracles Therapeutic Riding Center changed him, and that opened him up to be, really want to be around people to talk more. But these volunteers, they, they need at least three or four on every side of the horse just because some of these riders, you know, they can't physically hold themselves yeah. up. So if they're just patient and, and just really want to be a part of something, like we've already said, miraculous and life-changing, it's really a wonderful place to be. It was neat to be there. Yeah, I bet it was. I know how much you love horses yeah. as well. This <laughs> yes. is close to your heart. Um, let's talk about other ways to support this organization. Some people right. may not be able to get out there and actually volunteer physically. Can they do something else as well? Well, I mean, places like this always need donations. Right. I mean, it's expensive to take care of a horse, let alone feed it. Um, people can come out and and join them for a barn party that's actually happening on November 10th. So just a oh, couple fun. weeks yeah. from now, they can go out there and actually see it for themselves. So if they can't be there physically to be a volunteer, if they do want to give time or maybe make donations of products, then they can see for themselves where it's going. And then they can always sign up to volunteer. Absolutely. Once they're out there, they yes. won't be able to help themselves. <laughs> well, Kelly, true. thank you so much for introducing us to that. Yeah, it's really great. Thank course. you. Well, for some students in Leadville, skiing and snowboarding is more than just a hobby. They hope to turn it into a career. And they made their first step toward that by creating this terrain park. How it's bringing the community together and teaching students important life skills. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. class project that's probably unlike anything you have ever seen before. Students at Colorado Mountain College in Leadville came together to design and build this mountain terrain park. They even made the snow and groomed it themselves. Students who built this park are all part of the college's ski operations program. I'm doing this program because I love the ski area and I love the ski industry and I want to be a part of it and I want to help it improve as much as I can. 
Why not? Fun too. The hope is it'll bring people together at the park so that everyone can have a little bit of fun and maybe learn a little bit too while they're out there. That's such a Colorado class. <laughs> no, <laughs> nowhere else would that happen. Right? Yeah. Well, Lauren Whitney's with us now. We want to talk a little bit about ski season. It's here and everything it opened up and people are just having a good time already. Already we have three resorts that are open and they are going uh, not quite full strength, everyone, uh, in terms of uh, having all the runs open. But we did have a basin open and Trip Face sent us in this great picture. Colorado is open. I love seeing that. Some happy faces there. They definitely lined up for that. And then Ryan Taylor sent this in of Loveland's opening day. You can still see the fall colors <laughs> in the background. Saying, just doesn't look right, does it? With no. The fall leaves there is still. some snow underneath that banner that you can see there. So uh, yeah, these guys are so happy to be out there. Everyone's been so excited for ski season to open. We've actually had some good snowfall so far. And Tracy Howard Beavers sent us in this picture, uh, not doing any skiing, but on the top of Pikes Peak with her family there. Looks like a happy, happy bunch there. Yeah, and it looks like they're kind of cool up there, too. Didn't get snowed on, but it looks like snow back there behind them maybe a little bit. And Pikes Peak actually has seen a decent amount of snow. Yeah. You can't see it in that picture, but definitely sweatshirt weather when you go to the top of that area. So we love seeing pictures. We know ski season. We need you to keep sending them in when more and more people get to hit the slopes. Yeah, so much fun. Mm -hmm. Lauren, thank you so much. And be sure to share your photos with us. We want to see them. And we want to see you out enjoying Colorado with your family. So send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. And we will be sure to share right here on this show. Well, just because you're in the hospital doesn't mean you cannot enjoy the fun of fall. We're gonna show you who made sure these patients could explore their very own pumpkin patch without having to go very far at all. On this week's Together for Colorado Calendar Monday, it's a cocktails and comedy fundraiser live at Jack's on the 16th Street Mall. The event supports the Athena Project, which supports women in the arts. Thursday, head to the Rev the Runway Fashion Show in Denver. Proceeds from the show benefit National Jewish Health. And Saturday, it's Boots, Buckles, and Bourbon at the Stanley Marketplace in Aurora. Fundraiser helps the Great Escape Mustang Sanctuary. You can find more information on these events by visiting the Together for Colorado section of CBSDenver.com. A lot of fun things to do. Well, Halloween came early to Children's Hospital Colorado thanks to some farmers and first responders. They turned the grassy area into a patch of pumpkins for young cancer patients. May Farm scattered pumpkins all over the hospital's front lawn. Kids had a blast choosing their very own pumpkin. That includes Taylor Ellison. She's been in and out of the hospital since 2009. She's been battling a brain tumor and bone cancer. Taylor's parents say the day was about more than right. those pumpkins. It was about giving Taylor a chance to feel normal for a change. You know, her brothers went last week and got pumpkins um, from a farm, and she didn't get to go because she was here. So now she gets to be a part of that and gets to go home and carve a pumpkin this weekend with her brothers. I wonder what she's got to carve. Taylor says she loved picking out a pumpkin, but admits that her favorite part of Halloween is the candy. Well, Accord Maze in Wellington is doing more than offering up an adventurous time for kiddos. It's always showing them what compassion and second chances also look like. Everyone who works at Harvest Farm has struggled with sobriety. For them, the farm is an opportunity for a new life. Dylan Thomas traveled to Wellington to learn more about this one-of-a-kind recovery program. It's that time of the year where Coloradans are spending their time and money getting lost in the season and kind of like me here in corn mazes as well. But every dollar spent here at the Harvest Farm in northern Colorado also goes towards helping others find their way to sobriety. We have a 10 acre corn maze. We have pig races. We have a petting zoo. In the small town of Wellington. Two, one. Corn shooting from cannons. Oh, yeah. And all around joy are found in the fields of Harvest Farm. And the men running the festival arguably love it just as much as the customers. They see what we do and they, um, I think they really enjoy it. With so much laughter, so much to see and so much to eat, you may never notice most of the staff are recovering addicts. I was uh, addicted to meth and heroin. Those running the festival live on the property as part of the New Life program through the Denver Rescue Mission. A second chance at life and freedom. For Taylor Reed, I tried killing myself back in February. I went on a high speed chase. Reed has only been in the year long program for a few months. It's my longest stunt of sobriety since I was 12. At the festival, Reed gives tractor tours where he helps riders learn about the farm and his past mistakes. If I aggravate my case, then I go to prison for six years. So 
That's pretty good motivation. He hopes to graduate from the program. I want this more than breath. And maintain sobriety, much like his boss, Steve Petrofesso. I came here in 2010 uh, as a participant. The farm turned my life around, changed my life. With ticket sales. I'm living, breathing proof of what this program can do, uh, what God can do in somebody's life. Coloradans are coming together to help others harvest a new life, one corn shot or pig race at a time. It means a lot to us here at the farm and, and the participants as well. The entire Denver Rescue Mission. That is really incredible. Great job by all. The Harvest Farms Fall Festival runs through this Sunday. If you can't make it but would still like to support the program, you can. You're going to find a link for that on our website at cbsdenver.com. Vietnam veterans coming together for people they've never even met. They organized a special ceremony for 14 veterans who never got the burial that they deserve. Well, we're going to take you to this special showing of honor and respect. It's coming up next right here on Together. A Girl Scout is coming together to preserve a historic ranch. Walker Ranch was established in Boulder County back in 1865. But after more than 100 years, the place is in desperate need of some TLC. Well, that's where Renee Gangwish comes in. Dominic Garcia and Robert Gaidecki explains her mission to save this piece of history. Growing up in Colorado, I've had a lot of exposure to the wildlife and the outdoors. So it was fitting when Renee Gangwish found herself here for her Girl Scout Gold Award project. And it's always been a really special part of my childhood and my growing up. So I wanted to do something that helped the community and helped the national park and kind of improved it in any way I could. This is Walker Ranch, one of Colorado's biggest sites listed on the National Historic Register. A beautiful place around since the late 1800s, but its fence was starting to show its age. And I thought it was really, really special to help something like this. Renee went through the county, got approval, got the people and materials together and got to work. She also found out something cool from the county. I am the first Girl Scout they have worked with since they've mainly worked with Boy Scouts getting their Eagle projects. I thought it was just so cool that I could be the first one and I could open the door for other Girl Scouts to do stuff like this. I am so proud of these girls. I love them all to death. My whole troop wants to go for their gold award. This is all the old wood. Deborah Gangwish is one proud mom and troop leader. These girls, I am, they are strong girls, they're confident girls. I have no doubt in my mind their ability to lead. For all the young girls out there, Renee says dream big. Get out and see what they can do for their community and what they can do to improve the sites around their house. Great job. Well, Colorado's Boy Scouts, of course, keeping busy too. This month, Troop 439 teamed up with the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office to give back. Together, the two organized the Strasburg Cares Food Bank they collected hundreds of pounds of food for people in the eastern part of Arapahoe County, the sheriff's office, and the scouts say that they are proud that they can come together and give back to the community. Well, thank you again for joining us here on Together. It's all of you amazing viewers who make this show possible, and I love hearing from you, so please send me your story ideas, your feedback, and of course those pictures. We'll be sure to share them right here on the air. Until then, we take you to Fort Logan National Cemetery. Or this week, the unclaimed remains of 14 veterans were finally laid to rest. Michael Abeda takes us to this important tribute.